So we have a big project happening right now. It's funded by uh, Future Skills Centre Canada. And it's a two-year project, and we're at the end of the first year. And inside the project, there are these three pilots, one, two, and three. And they, they relate to different levels of the college. So one is college-wide. Pilot two is a better is change in a department. And pilot three is a change of course level. And you can see the, the research questions listed there. But really what we're looking at is, can we take XR technologies and put them in a college setting and transform the experiences of students, faculty, and staff in, in a positive way? And if by exposing them to these technologies, do they get more comfortable with them so that they'd be more likely to use them in the future? And do they develop some skills around it so it makes it easier each time that they, they use it? So we're we're doing quite a bit of activities under these. Pilot one is unlocking lots of technology for everybody, but keeping in mind too, um, equity, diversity and inclusion uh, as well, because when you put technology like this into play, you don't wanna be excluding people. You wanna make it as accessible as possible. Um, and as, as it says there, focus on empathy and intervention. So we were doing a, um, so a, an immersive VR experience there where you can be in somebody else's shoes. It's called body swaps, where our staff, students, and faculty can participate there. Pilot two is really interesting because it's about immersive VR teaching an anatomy. And we started with neural anatomy and we're moving into heart anatomy, but it's taught in several different programs in our health department. And you can imagine learning anatomy is really tough because you got to you know, memorize all the, the veins and nerves and bones and muscles and stuff. And, it, and it's very difficult to do on a 2D surface. So imagine it 3D in front of you. And the last one really is about using XR to, to help in construction trades and to bring in underrepresented populations. It makes it more engaging and interesting and they can stay engaged. So right now we have VR used in over 15 programs. So I've listed them there and I've probably got the number wrong. It's probably more than 15 because all the time more and more uh, departments are saying, I want to do this. So you can see it ranges from, from uh, nursing and science type topics to engineering and trades to art to event planning, uh, even culinary. And we've got more than 300 of those Oculus uh, Quest 2 headsets out there with students, faculty and staff, mostly with students and the students use them in their in their programs. We got a couple dozen other types of headsets. So there's other brands out there. We've got those. We have a virtual campus. So up in the, in the images, the, the, the top left image is me standing on a balcony looking out over our virtual campus. So it's like a college campus, uh, but it's entirely in a virtual space that you can access on a 2D screen, or you can put your VR headset on and wander around in there. We're about to go through an upgrade, which is pretty exciting because the, the resolution and graphics are going to um, increase, and uh, we're pretty excited about what that looks like. And you can see in the middle image there, the 3D Organon, that's the VR anatomy program we're using. Uh, we're also using one called Body Maps in there. And then there's, you know, showing on the images, you can see one for nursing, biochemistry. There's a physics one at the bottom where we're firing a cannon. At a boat way out there, you have to learn how to fire a cannon. And then our Indigenous Studies uh, virtual uh, worlds that I mentioned already. And there are three virtual worlds. One is the home, one is the community, and one is um, uh, natural environment. 